cruelest desert on Earth is far more hospitable than any place on Mars. The bright sandy surface and dusty atmosphere of Mars reflect enough sunlight back to space to cool the planet, freezing out all its water, locking it in a perpetual ice age. Human activities brighten our landscape and our atmosphere. Might this ultimately make an ice age here? At the same time, we are releasing vast quantities of carbon dioxide, increasing the greenhouse effect. The Earth need not resemble Venus very closely for it to become barren and lifeless. It may not take much to destabilize the Earth's climate, to convert this heaven, our only home in the cosmos, into a kind of hell. The study of the global climate, the sun's influence, the comparison of the Earth with other worlds, these are subjects in their earliest stages of development. They are funded poorly and grudgingly. And meanwhile, we continue to load the Earth's atmosphere with materials about whose long-term influence we are almost entirely ignorant. There are worlds that began with as much apparent promise as Earth, but something went wrong. Knowing that worlds can die alerts us to our danger. If a visitor arrived from another world, what account would we give of our stewardship of the planet Earth? Since this series was first broadcast, the dangers of the increasing greenhouse effect have become much more clear. We burn fossil fuels like uh, coal and gas and petroleum, putting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and thereby heating the Earth. The hellish conditions on Venus are a reminder that this is serious business. Computer models that successfully explain the climates of other planets predict the deaths of forests, parched croplands, the flooding of coastal cities, environmental refugees, widespread disasters in the next century, unless we change our ways. What do we have to do? Four things. One, much more efficient use of fossil fuels. Uh, why not cars that get 70 miles a gallon instead of 25? Two, research and development on safe alternative energy sources, especially solar power. Three, reforestation on a grand scale. And four, helping to bring the billion poorest people on the planet to self-sufficiency, which is the key step in curbing world population growth. Every one of these steps makes sense apart from greenhouse warming. Now, no one has proposed that the trouble with Venus is that there once was uh, Venusians who drove fuel inefficient cars, but our nearest neighbor nevertheless is a stark warning on the possible fate of an Earth-like world.